drone manufacturer Unique have just announced their new Mantis Q drone. Boasting an incredible 33 minutes flight time and a 4K camera, is this drone gonna give DJI some competition? Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On, and yes, Unique, one of the DJI competitors, has released a new consumer-grade drone. It's called the Mantis Q, and it's sub £500, $500, which is really going to appeal to lots of market consumers out there. However, have Unique learned their lessons after the launch of the Breeze 4K? A drone which, whilst it wasn't bad, it didn't fold, so it wasn't that portable, it was lightweight, and it was 4K, but it had no mechanical gimbal, it only had EIS. They also didn't release a transmitter for it until quite some time after launch. So first of all, let's look at what's good about the new Mantis Q. So first of all, the obvious point is that its form factor is very similar to the Mavic Air. It's impossible not to talk about DJI drones when talking about market competitors like the new Mantis Q. Now, one new recent drone from Parrot, the Anafi, has an upward tilting gimbal, and obviously that has really massive appeal. Now, the Mantis Q doesn't tilt 90 degrees upwards. However, it does give a tilt of around 20 degrees. And just to give a comparison, the Mavic Air tilts upwards 17 degrees. So the two are a little bit on par there. It's got voice control. Now, in my experience, voice control with drones has always been a bit of a gimmick. You're not always flying in an utterly silent area. Therefore, your voice is not always understood especially if you have a weird accent or a language that the app doesn't particularly recognize. A gimmick it might be, but many other things have been gimmicks in the past and through evolution they've proven to be incredibly useful. So we won't judge that until we test it for ourselves. Face recognition is another feature which we thought was a gimmick, but actually proved as quite interesting on the DJI Spark. This basically meant that just by turning on the drone, pointing it at your face, it would take off and recognize you. That's quite cool. Again, we need to see it in practice to judge whether it's useful or not. Now this is a point on its specification that is going to impress. Its top speed is 72 kilometers per hour. Now just as an example comparison that's the same as the Mavic 2. The Mavic Pro's top speed is 65, the Mavic Air's is 68. It incorporates visual tracking. Now that's a key feature that people look for on drones. The DJI drones all have active track, which over the years has improved and become better and better. The Unique Mantis Q also has it, but again, we really need to test it to judge whether their technology is any good. However, the flight controller does use a flight controller that's well established, open source, and already tried and tested. Hopefully it incorporates that feature of tracking, therefore it should already be quite a mature feature. Now here's another win it has the longest flight time of any consumer drone that I have seen so far on the market this year. 33 minutes. Now clearly flight time testing with new drones is done in a nil wind scenario, probably in some lab where there are no external influences. However, if all drones are tested in that way, which no doubt they are, then actually that still is better than the two DJI competitors, the Mavic Air and the Mavic Pro. So the Mavic Air on paper is 21 minutes, the Mavic Pro is 27, the Mavic 2 is 31 minutes, so two minutes less than the Mantis Q. But again, we need to put these two up against each other head to head to see which is more accurate. Interestingly, the battery specification on the Mantis Q is a 3S, so that's 11.1 volts, and it's a 2800 milliamps. Incredible that they're able to get 33 minutes out of a battery that actually is really small. The Mantis Q is under 500 grams, as is the Mavic Air. Now, obviously, compared to the Mavic Pro, which is a bigger class of drone, that comes in at just over 730 grams. It's still good for the Mantis in that it's light, it's portable. It isn't going to be under that all-important 250 grams unfortunately but that's unavoidable on a drone of this class. It has indoor positioning now that's key as well. Drones such as Snap from Vantage Robotics have only just introduced optical flow whereas the Mavic Pro has had twin dual optical flow sensors for the last three years. Indoor use of a drone is becoming more popular as they're becoming safer and especially when they're equipped with obstacle avoidance so that's really good to see. A very basic one it supports GPS and GLONASS same as pretty much every other market drone right now, good to have that redundancy and it gives more accurate positioning. Finally, it's got an onboard SD card slot. Some modern cheap budget drones like Lily Next Gen have done away with the SD slots altogether, but it's nice to see that it has one because it means you've got that additional storage boost if you need it.
So they're the positives and so far on paper it's looking really good. Let's have a quick look at what's not so good. Now with the range on most DJI drones you're looking at over four kilometers via their OcuSync technology which lets you explore far away. However new laws regarding line of sight use of drones means that actually that's not strictly legal anymore. The Mantis Q has a range of 800 meters under CE regulations so that's most of Europe and under FCC one and a half kilometers. Now that is still quite some range it's definitely out of sight but it's not quite as far as some people might want. Now a big one and this is quite a big one for me, it doesn't have a fully mechanical gimbal. From the pictures we can see and the ability for it to tilt up and down, it obviously has a one axis gimbal. But whether that one axis mechanical movement is used for stabilization, we're not sure of yet. The advertising does talk about EIS and it looks like unfortunately the stabilization on this drone is entirely EIS and that the single mechanical axis used for moving the gimbal up and down is simply used for that purpose. Not having a mechanical gimbal is a real problem. The Spark has a two-axis mechanical gimbal, Air and Mavic Pro both have a three-axis mechanical gimbal. Mechanical gimbals are key to getting that smooth cinematic footage. Not having one is a real shame. It means the entire stabilization process is done electronically by warping, stretching, panning and scanning the image and that can lead to artifacting and oddities appearing in that end footage. We need to see some real footage out of this camera before we can judge for sure. Next up is another big problem. Now it's called the Mantis Q and it boasts 4K. However, 4K is non-stabilized. As soon as you enable the electronic stabilization, the end result is only 1080p. So for example, that's exactly the same as Lily Next Gen, which although it has a 4K camera sensor, the actual end footage result is only 1080p. Now this is subject to how the software and the app work and we don't know that yet but that's not to say that you can't capture in 4K non-stabilized and then perhaps stabilize the footage in post-editing. However if you get any wind, turbulence and also of course just the natural movement of the drone in flight you're going to have an image that's moving all over the place. That's a real shame and I hope that Unique at some point can build a three axis or at least a two axis mechanical gimbal into the Mantis Q. Now here's another negative, no obstacle avoidance. It does have downward sensors it seems which give it its indoor flight capability but we don't see any sideways, upwards or rear or front obstacle avoidance. However, the price point of this drone means I'm not surprised. It's cheap and you can't really expect obstacle avoidance sensors and technology on a drone of this class. So they're the pros and cons that we can see so far on the Mantis Q. It's very hard to pass judgment until we have one in our hands and can test it and we have been in touch with Unique to try to coordinate that. One positive however is the price point and this is going to please a lot of people. It comes in as the base package with one battery at £450, likely to be $450 as well and that is very cheap. Now as a comparison that would buy you a Spark package, however Spark is limited only to 1080p but it's still a very capable drone. As a comparison with the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air you're going to be paying twice as much almost for those two drones with a transmitter and a battery. So what do I think of the Mantis Q so far? Well on paper the 33 minutes is the point that really stands out and I think on that basis this is going to be a drone that's really going to appeal to the explorers amongst you. People who want to fly their drone without being constrained by a very short flight time. The range limitation of 800 meters or one and a half kilometers under FCC may be a bit of an issue for those adventurers but remember that's direct range away from you. With 33 minutes of flight and one and a half kilometers at your disposal that gives you plenty of scope for flying in the area all around yourself. Then there's the camera. Now obviously the other DJI drones are native 4K except for the Spark. This drone however is only going to give you stabilized footage at 1080p. So for that reason this is not for the professional videographers. However it does have a 13 megapixel camera which is one megapixel larger than the Air and almost 0.2 larger than the Mavic Pro. So you're going to get really good photos from this drone. Unfortunately however it does have an electronic shutter and that does mean that we without mechanical stabilization there is a slight chance of getting blur in those photos. But just to wrap up it is almost half the price of the DJI drones therefore this could be a great starter drone. It does come with a transmitter and a battery and at that price it does seem like quite a bargain at the moment. And finally there is another key point here. Are
choice has been narrowed to DJI for the last few years. Their prices go up and up, and we need competitors like Unique to grow in the market. The more successful competitors against DJI are, the cheaper DJI will have to push their RRP down to in order to keep selling drones. So let's give the Mantis Q a chance. Let's wait until we've got one in our hands. You can trust our opinion because we're unbiased and we test things rigorously. Feel free to petition Unique Europe for us to get one sent and keep watching. Comment below with your thoughts. What do you think of the Mantis Q? What's your overall experience or thoughts about Unique? Let's see those comments below. Give the video a thumbs up and of course, click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thanks for watching.